Each day, New York's crowded streets are abundant with the sights, smells, and sounds that make the city so easily recognizable. But at night, something else scurries around the city streets. New York is known for its rats. Next to the pigeon, they are probably the closest thing the city has to a mascot. They are fascinating. They are complex in their behavior. Other people obviously would think that they are disgusting, they're vermin. People who move here from out of state are just not ready for the amount of rats that we have out and about. New York City has long been considered one of the rattiest <laughs> cities in America. Some estimate around two million rats call it home. While most New Yorkers have accepted rats as part of city life, they pose various health risks. And while government agencies work to manage the problem, some New Yorkers have taken it into their own hands. I see rats that you don't, and they're going bananas here tonight. Here is how New York City rats out its rodents. Rats have been here since the city was founded. Rats have lived in the city. Rats have survived in the city by the law of large numbers. Richard Reynolds and his team of rat hunting canines have prowled the streets of New York City for nearly 30 years. The dogs are trained to dispatch rats. They have jobs that they do. There are catch dogs that stand out away from the action and wait for rats to run. Then you have the push dogs that go into trash bags and other places and make the rats bolt to the catch dogs. This dog right here, uh, Rommel, he's a Yog Terrier. And basically what this dog does in the group is he sniffs him out and he kind of like sets him up so the other dogs can knock him down, so to speak. Well, you're going to see uh, what looks like mayhem. It's actually very controlled mayhem and very well-planned mayhem. Camera, camera with me. Give me a camera. I need a camera over here. Over here. Right there. You guys ready? Here we go. Here we go. Party. In New York City, uh, the rat that we see is the Rattus norvegicus, commonly referred to as the Norway rat, but probably more accurately referred to as the brown rat. These brown rats made their New York City debut in the mid-1700s. As ships would set sail for the colonies, rats would stow away on board and find a home in the New World. What has made them so successful in New York City is that there's always been a dense population of people that have provided food and water for them. And given those essential needs for survival, they have done very well. Rats are nothing short of adaptable. They can survive on just one ounce of food and water each day. They also reproduce quickly, with the average gestation period lasting from 21 to 23 days. A female rat births around eight pups in a single litter. These newborns will then begin to reproduce with other rats in just five weeks. Since they arrived centuries ago, Rats have evolved into two distinct groups, and like human New Yorkers, they can be classified by their neighborhoods, uptown and downtown rats. A 2017 study from Fordham University found that both groups differ genetically and are separated by a geographic barrier, Midtown. But Midtown Manhattan is not rat-free, not even close. The area is more of a commercial district, there is less household trash and backyard space for rats to thrive off of than in uptown or downtown Manhattan. You know, they have some really fantastic abilities that allow them to navigate human environments very successfully. Being that rats and mice also carry a ton of pathogens, it is a matter of public health. They carry things like toxoplasmosis, salmonella, uh, the bubonic plague, and we don't want any of that. 
It's usually the exterminator that gets the first call when a rat is spotted. I am an exterminator and I'm an owner operator of my own company. I do extermination of rodents, insects, and wildlife trapping. As an exterminator, a typical day is getting up super, super early so I can see the action. I have keys for almost all of my restaurants. No one is around, it's quiet. I sneak in, I keep the lights off, I grab my flashlight, I flash it around the location, and I look to see what's scattering. So there's an entire ecosystem in the wall voice of New York City buildings at all times that would probably make a lot of people want to vomit and jump out of their skin. As you can see, somebody tries to close the rodent hole with spray foam. And generally, a rodent can gnaw through weak concrete, mortar, wood, very easily, and plastic. So something like this does not keep them out. The entry point for this building in particular is right here. You can see that there's a hole in the building. If I stick my hand up, it just goes all the way up. So there is a gap where there's a lack of insulation. Definitely no solid insulation. And if you look at these brown marks right here, where the concrete goes from gray to this dark color, that's actually from the rat's body. It's an oil they secrete called sebum. It leaves the scent trail, and it will invite other rats to actually follow them up in here. As we could see, by the extreme amount of dark in color, there is quite an infestation, and we've got some droppings right here in the corner, um, and the scent of urine. If I was in charge of getting rid of all the rats, the very first thing I would do would be to get rodent-proof trash receptacles. If you eliminate the competing food source, the rats will be more likely to, one, not breed as often, Two, not set up shop in places where people are. They're with us because of our garbage and our littering. In the summer of 2017, the city launched a $32 million citywide initiative to reduce the rat population in three target areas by 70%. The city installed 336 Big Belly solar compactors with no accessible entryway for the rats. The city now requires increased trash pickups, and any person caught illegally dumping trash faces heavy fines. But some of these new and improved trash cans are not as effective as advertised. There you see solar-powered, compacting, rat-proof can whose purpose is totally defeated by being left open, by all the stuff around the edges. So you might just as well have a regular old container. They don't work because they don't lock them. So the rats go in down below. So city exterminators look to other methods. There is a rodent bait station, and this is being used by the Department of Health to manage a known population. And so inside would be most likely either a rodenticide, that is a bait that the rodent would feed on, and then within a week or so um, succumbs to the active ingredient. Or um, in some cases what they do is they have a non-toxic bait, so it doesn't have the active ingredient, and then they'll put snap traps in there. So the rodent will come, they'll get used to the bait, and then they'll deploy a trap, and that will catch the rodent that comes in. But still, rats persist. And some New Yorkers have taken it upon themselves to manage the problem. Camera, camera with me. Give me a camera. I need a camera over here. Over here. Right there. You guys ready? Here we go. Here we go, party. Camera, camera, camera. Oh, you guys ready? Here we go. 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 We had a dog show there that was fairly overrun with rats, and the, uh, some of our dogs decided on their own to handle the problem. And the uh, park superintendent saw that and said, hey, can you guys come back and uh, make it a regular thing? And rats was born. 
Any dog will catch a rat. Any dog will kill a rat. The Terriers do it faster and better than the other breeds, and they 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 endure. They have the the tenacity to hang in there. A hundred rats a night are not enough for them. You, they they still want more. effect on the rat population in New York. We do it for the dogs first, for the enrichment, for the fulfillment of the dog's DNA. We're helping the community out secondary to it, which is good, but you're never gonna control the rat population in New York City. It's a never-ending thing. From traps to improving sanitation to hunting dogs, people are always coming up with ways to wage war on the city's rats. Exterminators, researchers, and city officials alike urge New Yorkers to be vigilant in doing their part. The only thing that's ever going to reduce rats to a manageable level is to clean up. If you remove the food supply, the rats go away. Plain and simple. It's important that we consider we, we want to manage the problem, but the problem didn't start in one day. The problem started over time as rodents were attracted to an area for food, and so now we have to take that time to manage the population effectively. Otherwise, we're not gonna be able to eliminate the problem from a site.